Hi, Tina. Hi, Kelsey. Hello.
Good morning. Good morning. In the name of Jesus, I welcome you all to worship. We give thanks for all of you that we're able to make in the midst of all that's happening in our community and in the midst, too, of just the cold winter that has finally greeted us. Just a few announcements, everyone. Today we celebrate the baptism of our Lord. And so we get to celebrate with our baptismal families from this last year. Glenna from Thrivent will be giving to them their medallion that has on there their name and date of their baptism. And we'll also be then hearing the good word. Fred gets to preach for us today as we'll be hearing how our Lord was baptized. Also, too, everyone, as you have seen, we have some changes because of the surge in our community. So we ask you just to go as you and your family feel comfortable. We are modified today, so if you need to grab a communion cup still, Jocelyn has that basket, and you can grab your communion that way. We may have some people out in the parking lot as well, too, and then, of course, we have on streaming as well, too. Please do stay connected to our worship, our, our um, webpage, or we'll call into the offices as you have any questions. We hope we just hit the surge and we can return much to normal. Also to everyone, next week is just nine o'clock again, and that is due to annual meetings. So we'll worship together at nine, annual meeting right after and immediately following that, we will have our vote to call for Deacon Nick, just like we did last year to extend that call again. And we'll let you know about the brunch, if that can happen or not. And I know we've got Don with us next door. They're worshiping via transmitter. Uh, he has put an announcement for stewardship about qualified charitable distributions. You can see the details on there. So if you have any questions, Don's a good one to ask for that. And last week we said Glenna would be too as we check things with her. And also too, there's a new shipment of fair trade coffee. And we continue to care and love for the family we got to sponsor that came from Afghan, Afghanistan. It's the Han family. We are in immediate need of an infant car seat for them. So if anybody has a car seat, you're willing to donate. And then if you would like to get some infant disposable diapers, bring them on by. And then Karen and Christy also share as well too, if you would like to get to meet this family, please let them know, because they are a joy and delight. All of our song leaders, everyone, are sick, so we're gonna just get through as best we can. We'll have a great time singing. So we know them well and made a couple few changes, but I invite you all to stand, everyone. Please take a few moments to quietly reflect and confess your sins to God. God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, 
I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. have been forgiven and reconciled to God and one another, we share the peace of Christ. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Please greet one another with Christ's peace as you are comfortable. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Please join me, everyone, as we pray together the prayer of the day. Almighty God, you anointed Jesus at his baptism with the Holy Spirit and revealed him as your beloved Son. Keep all who are born of water and the Spirit faithful in your service, that we may rejoice to be called children of God, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you all to be seated. As I shared, we celebrate the baptisms that we had, and I know we've got one family with us, I believe, but we'll read all of the names in celebration of them. And I'd like to invite Glenda to come forward and Kelly as our representatives from Thrive It. We're so grateful for the gift as they do these medallions for us and share ways that they can be part of our journeys as well, too. Those who were baptized in 2021, I invite the child and the family to come forward. Jack Jansen, Beckett Rudolph, and he's here. Caitlin Harms, Violet Mosel, Clay Callahan, and Murphy Wilkinson. A reading from Romans. Do you all know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that as just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in, you, and walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Glenda, if you'll present the medallion. And let us pray a prayer of blessing for Beckett and the family. Join to Christ in the waters of baptism. Let us praise God for those who have been baptized in our church family in this last year. Praise to you, O God, for the waters of baptism and for your word that saves us. Breathe your spirit into all who are gathered here. Bless those who have been newly baptized and all your children. Especially we pray for blessings for Jack and Clay, for Violet and Caitlin and Beckett and Murphy. May you also bless their parents and godparents as they live out their baptismal promises. Satisfy all with, our, with your living water, O Christ, 
as you live and reign with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us praise God for our newly baptized in their family. Thank you, Rudolph. Thank you, Glenn and Kelly. We continue, everyone, with the reading of God's Word. This reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 through 7. But now, thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flames shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you. Because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you, I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Here in the first reading. <clears throat> Let us read Psalm 29 responsibly. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. The voice of the Lord is over the waters, the God of glory thunders. The Lord over mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness and does The voice of the Lord causes the oaks to whirl and strips the forest bare, and in his temple all say, Glory. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel comes to us from the book of Luke, chapter 3, verses 15 through 17. And 21 through 22. Glory to you, O Lord. As the people were filled with expectations and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to unite, untie, the thong of his, of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear the threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the shaft he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus had been baptized and was praying, the heavens was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in a bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from the heaven, You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. Here ends the gospel reading for today. I invite you all to be seated, and I invite Lacey and all the children to come forward for the children's sermon.
Good morning. <laughs> oh my goodness, look at you. I'm not mom. <laughs> oh. There's mommy. Oh. Maybe. Yeah. There we go. Go. Okay. Well, good morning, everyone. So, so what did we just hear about? What happened today? What did Fred just read about? It starts with a B. Jesus' baptism. So I brought a few things I thought we could talk about. They're similar, but there's differences. So the first one is Rice Krispies. Okay, so we've got Rice Krispies. But then I also have these Rice Krispies. They're the great value ones. So they're very similar, right? They pretty much taste the same, don't they? But what's different? Maybe the boxes? Yeah, the boxes are a bit different. So again, similar but different. Okay, I've got a couple more here. Okay, chips. Similar? What's similar about them? That they're chips, yep, but they have a different flavor maybe in different packaging. And the last one I have is kind of the ongoing thing that's going on right now. We've got Robitussin and we've got day and night. So similar but yet different. So I want you to keep that in mind as we're talking about today's lesson, similar but different. So one of the questions that I always had was, why did Jesus even have to get baptized? Does anyone know? Do you know why Jesus got baptized? No? So Jesus, he didn't have to get baptized, did he? He didn't. But he chose to get baptized. He is a leader. He wanted to be a leader, and he wants us to follow his example. Where Jesus leads the way, we are called to follow. So again, he didn't have to be baptized. And Jesus was baptized just like we were, but there's those two differences, okay? Um, it kind of makes me think of some of the leaders, good leaders in my life, some of the best managers. Um, do you have any teachers or coaches that you look up to? Yep. That's exactly what Jesus is doing for us. He is setting the example and he's being the leader for us. So leaders, they inspire us, they motivate us, they bring us great joy. And what did God say when the dove, when, when the dove, when the heavens opened up? This is my son. This is my beloved son who brings me great joy and I am well pleased. So God was so proud and just happy, that big smile, you know, when parents, as parents, we're always like, yes, that's my kiddo, that's my kiddo out there. That's exactly what God was doing in that situation. And, you know, it's neat to think about it when our kiddos get baptized. I can just imagine God saying, yes, I'm so happy. I'm so happy and I'm filled with joy. So it's through baptism that we follow Jesus, we share his love, and we spread all that kindness that he wants us to share. So with that, let us pray. Dear God, we give thanks and praise that you brought us into baptism. Thank you for our families who brought us up in faith Thank you for the mentors and leaders who we follow. And thank you for our pastors and leaders in faith. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you. The Lord be with you. 
The one thing we want to know today is God is alive and well. The basis of our discussion today is the baptism of Jesus. And with a few questions and wonders, what does this all mean to us? Okay, let's sit back. And let's look at the baptismal font. We use when we baptize a small infant or an adult. Now if we look at it and think about what has happened around this baptismal font, the last time there was a baptism here at Luther Memorial, Pastor Sarah had a small baby with a mom and dad, included with the baptismal sponsors, and they stood around the baptismal font. I think we can agree that the baptismal font is a beautiful structure that was hand carved by a talented individual with hands holding a baptismal bowl with water within it. I'm amazed how one person was able to design and carve the wood structure with such beauty. We can recall Pastor Sarah and the family surrounding the baptismal font. And the parents are holding a, a special new member to the kingdom of God. Most of the time, the family members are in good cheer as long as they all behave. And I don't think there's reference to Pastor Sarah at all. No. There is also a candle lit. And I'm going to light a candle in reference of that, and hopefully I can get it lit. Wow. To remind us that the Holy Spirit is present and that Jesus says to us, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. That is how we baptize new members today at Luther Memorial. Now I want you to kind of step back in time and envision the, the gospel lesson for today. We are standing in the Jordan River, which is a river that flows between the Sea of Galilee and the Dead Sea. And I'll guarantee you it's not the cleanest river in Israel. Then picture the John the Baptist who is dressed in clothing made from a camel, hair and hide. And probably from pictures of John the Baptist, he was unshaven and probably looked like he was in need of a good scrubbing. John the Baptist is now baptizing all those who are present. And along comes Jesus, whom he also is baptized. Every time I read this, this, this scripture, I question, why did Jesus need to be baptized? We know that Jesus as the Son of God and has lived his life without sin. God shines a light upon Jesus when he is baptized and spoke that Jesus was his beloved Son. John the Baptist spoke that Jesus was baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire representing the Holy Spirit. So what is the message that Jesus wants to have us understand. We need to remember that baptism is a blessed sacrament for each one of us as believers in Christ. God's grace takes on every visible form in baptism. Your sins are washed away by the power of God's work connected with water and the light you know, of a candle. So we continue to ask, why did is Jesus need to be baptized? This may have been the same question that John the Baptist had. You and I know that baptism is a great blessing. That our Lord gives us at, as, as individual believers and as members of his holy church. We can look back at Jesus' baptism and possibly 
realize that this is the beginning of Jesus' ministry in the world. A ministry that continues even up to today. Jesus' baptism was a sign of beginning of his ministry among us. Our, baptize, our baptism is a sign of our beginning ministry, our role in the church. No, we should not be looking at our baptism as an insurance policy to heaven. But baptism is our boarding pass to a lifetime with Jesus. Baptism begins a relationship with Jesus which needs to be nourished, needs to be fed, needs to be strengthened, needs to be enriched and kept alive. By faithfully giving oneself to God's means of grace through the words and the sacraments and especially when you take part in Holy Communion. Our journey through life with Jesus needs the encouragement, the strength, and the lasting power of a faithful presence in and with the community of believers. So how does that come about with a community of believers? As I was preparing uh, for the sermon today, I came across an interesting story. It takes place in a small village in Europe some many, many years ago. A certain nobleman wanted to leave a legacy for the townspeople to remember him by. In his great wisdom, he decided to build a church, a legacy to the townspeople. But the one thing he did not want to reveal was his plan to anyone, and he wanted kept a secret. As you might know, I've said before, a secret is not a secret when you tell it. When the church was completed, the people gathered, they marveled at the church's structure, beauty, and completeness. Following many comments of praise, an astute observer and you know, inquired, but where are the lamps? How will the church be lit? Without answering, the nobleman pointed to some brackets on the wall. He then gave each family a lamp to be carried to the worship service and to be hung on the wall. Each time you are here, the area where you are seated will be be lighted, the nobleman explained. Each time you are not here, the area will be dark. Whenever you fail to come to church, some part of God's house will be dark. Your light will shine within the darkness of the church. Christ is a light which shines in our individual lives and at the same time a light which is spread to others. Okay, let's think about the candle. A candle loses nothing by being lit. Lighting another candle, if I can get this one to light, miracles. You can see, in fact, it again, because there is now two candles in which to see in the darkness. Instead of one light piercing the darkness, now there are two. Each light gives strength and courage to each other. Each soul, each person in the body of Christ gives strength, courage, faith, and hope to the others as they walk together in the darkness of this world. As you know, I'm in the, in the studies of the parish ministry, and I've had the distinct appreciation of, of certain professors using the documents from Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who's a German, a German Lutheran theologist, theologian, and he was an anti-Nazi, which led him to his death. He wrote a book titled Life Together, and I summarize. His main emphasis is that a Christian needs another Christian to speak God's work. 
The Christian needs to be reminded again and again, especially when he becomes uncertain or discouraged. For by ourselves, we cannot help ourselves alone. We truly need each other because of Jesus Christ. By now, you should have determined that baptism is a unique event in our lives. It's an event which includes everyone. It is implied to each one equally. And it leads to be us to be responsible for each other in the community. Baptism is a light of hope, a light of strength for those in Christ and for those who are still searching. May your light so shine. Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on us. Help us to shine our light on others throughout the world. Amen. At this time, we'll receive our morning's offering and we'll also sing our song of the day, Baptized in Water. rise as we sing together our prayer of thanksgiving. Christ in the waters of baptism and to one another, let us boldly confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As the Spirit of the Lord is poured upon, poured upon God's children, we come before God with all our concerns, our prayers, our praises. By the Holy Spirit, O oh God, you gather us together with Christ in one another and are sent out to share the light of Christ in the good news given. Inspire all your faithful people to be fervent in prayer and service that all may know they are precious in your sight. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Establish, O oh God, among all the nations blessings of your peace. Raise up leaders who will protect the vulnerable people in their care. Strengthen advocates who will continue to work for mercy and justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Continue, O oh God, to bless all those who are in need of your healing touch, especially all in our community who are sick with illness or COVID. And we pray, Lord, especially for your healing for Steve and Robin, for Larry and Nina Jean, for Shirley and Scott, and for all those that we re remember before you in our hearts and minds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We are joined in baptism to Christ and one another. Bless all our newly baptized of this previous year, their baptismal families, and all of us together in this church family. Help us to be faithful in fellowship, worship, sharing our lives, and serving and seeking justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O oh God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. By the leading of the star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Be holy, holy, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth. all to be seated as we'll have communion in our pews. If you did not receive a communion cup, just raise your hand and our ushers will check on you to make sure that you have a communion cup. Just raise your hand and Jocelyn will get to you. Holy One, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for the hope given to us and the promise to your people. We give you thanks for the prophets' hopes and dreams. 
and for Mary's openness to your will, we give you thanks for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my body, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Pour out your Holy Spirit, O God, upon this bread and this wine and these spaces, that through it we may be graced with your presence and filled with your love to let our light shine for this world. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. I invite you all to take your wafer in your hand, the body of Christ given for you. Amen. Please take the cup before you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. May the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which you have now received, strengthen you and keep you in his grace unto life everlasting. Amen. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all, strengthened with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please rise as you're able for the blessing. God, who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you and who calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Please join together as we sing our sending song, The Choral Benediction.
world share the good news. Thanks be to God.